I think that is the stupidest, stupidest place for a fire sprinkler. Even though I knew it was there, I still jammed it with my veto bag coming up. So lucky that thing hasn't popped a hole yet. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today we have a call on a AC not working, or here's the actual call, but I know it's an AC not working. The call is that the fire alarm is in a trouble condition and that it keeps going off. They called the fire alarm company, they came out and they said you need to call your HVAC company. In hindsight, they should have called me. Uh, that's the best bet because I have pretty good knowledge of how these systems work. But anyways, um, I'm here now, okay? And downstairs at the fire alarm panel, I'm gonna pull up a little clip right now and show you what I'm seeing. So on the fire alarm panel, it's showing a supervisory error, okay? Supervisory trouble condition, basically. And usually what that means is that the proving circuit has opened, okay? At the fire alarm uh, panel, they monitor the duct detectors. The duct detectors usually have a proving circuit that tells us if something happens with the wiring going to the duct detector to the alarm panel. The reason why they do that is to prove that the circuit is intact in case there's ever a fire, the alarm company wants to be able to know if a duct detector sig or, uh, you know, senses a fire. If the proving circuit, the communication cables to the alarm panel disappear from the circuit, then they know there's something wrong, okay? The things that can make the proving circuit open is a unit being powered down or a duct detector in a trouble condition, something as simple as a mouse eating through the communication wires. I've talked about that a bunch. Anyways, I just got up on the roof. We have three air conditioners. That's where we're gonna start, okay? We're gonna check the air conditioners out, just do a visual inspection, and we're gonna see if any of them might have something obvious that would cause us to trigger something, okay? This one right off the bat has some alarms in it, but typically that won't trigger a trouble condition, okay? It looks like we're calling, so I'm gonna ignore this one for the moment. We'll look at those alarms in a little while. I'm looking for something pretty obvious usually, like a unit being powered down. Sometimes when they have filter changers here, they'll leave the unit off, you know, and that'll create this trouble condition, so. Um, this one right here is running. I know you guys can't see it because this stupid prodigy board is hard to see, but it says cooling, the unit is running. I should have said, I know you guys can't see when I showed that other unit, but it showed some error codes, but it was running. So this is our last unit right here. Looks like someone was up here because every one of these is not closed all the way. That's one of my pet peeves. And this unit is not running. We have a blank display. We're gonna have to start here. So this one right here, let's go over here. Power switch, see if it's off. Doesn't look to be off. Oftentimes the filter changing company will leave these units off, but uh, those don't look like new filters. Okay, oh, but look at that. It's all wrapped up. There's a bunch of balloons stuck in there, so that's good. We'll have to dig into that. But we need to figure out why this unit's not running. So we're gonna get a meter out and check voltage and see what's going on. Uh, yeah, we've got a bank right here we can check voltage at, so something. Look at this VFD. This thing is blown apart. And I noticed that when I put this bar right here, there's pieces of the VFD right here. It's interesting though, because there's two of those, almost like it's been changed before. But yeah. We definitely are gonna have a bad VFD. I can pretty much guarantee we're not gonna have any voltage here, so I'll check it real quick. Okay, and so we can simply just check power right here. Nothing, 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 all legs, and then we'll check them to ground. Three volts, three volts, three volts, nothing. So the unit is powered down. The breaker was not tripped right here, so we need to go downstairs to the main and check there. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and power down this unit here. So it's off now. And then we'll turn on, uh, we'll go downstairs and see if we have a trip breaker. We'll turn it on and then come up here and troubleshoot further. All right, after spending a while on the phone with hold and tech support and national accounts and da 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 da, da all that stuff. Um, nobody has this drive in stock. Uh, it's gonna take a day or so to get it. So what I'm gonna do is we are going to probably temporarily install a contactor, uh, see if we can't get this unit up and running, but 
So we're gonna start by unhooking drive and checking the ground, making sure we don't have blower motors and stuff. I'll put in a contactor, wire it in temporarily, and uh, we'll remove this and then order the part. So I marked all the wires, pulled them off. I mean, not that I really need them marked, I can figure it out, but we still have no power to this unit. We're gonna get this drive out. In a perfect world, I'd like to be able to um, hook this guy up to uh, the actual circuit board and run the indoor blower motor off of that, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to figure that out or not. Worst case scenario, I'll hook up the contactor to the R, I'm sorry, to the G and the C con uh, thermostat wire. And the only problem with that is, is that the unit won't have test function in the meantime. Because I don't think that the test function sends power to the thermostat. I think it completely ignores the thermostat. So if you were to put it into test mode, I don't think that uh, it would turn the contactor on. But, you know, who knows? We'll see. I know there's 24 volts going to this relay right here, but I just don't know if this is a call. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. So we'll have to see. We'll figure it out though. Shouldn't be too difficult. I'll put all the screws back in here. So that way uh, they're not lost when we come back to do the work. That way we know exactly where they're at. I could theoretically too just uh, wire the, just jump these guys together. But I'd rather not do that. I'd rather put a contactor in here because who knows how long it's going to take. I would for them to approve it and stuff. So I'd rather it not be running 24-7. So that's that. Uh, I disconnected this, but we're going to have to figure this out. This is the, the relay that I'm assuming puts it into second stage. See, because this thing, uh, it's uh, the second, the, the VFD only speeds up when it goes into second stage, basically. So I'm assuming that's in here somewhere. But okay, I'll have to figure this out. All right, got the contactor installed. Um, you know me, I'm still gonna have to flip that around because that's driving me nuts. Now I gotta try to see if I can wire this into this unit or not. But before we do that, we're gonna test uh, everything to ground, okay? To see if we have any direct shorts. I'm trying to find a reason for this VFD to blow up. Um, so I'll test that to ground. And then what I'm gonna do is come over here and according to this guy right here, this legend, the blower contactor is K3 right here. And I already found it, the K3 relay, that's the symbol for a relay right there, is right there. And it looks like the wires coming into that is J265B, J265A. Um, K65, what is that? That's an exhaust fan. So I gotta try to find um, those wires. Uh, because I don't I don't know if I can make this work. I don't think I can but This is my VFD. I'll have to look into it This is labeled differently because the units actually programmed for a VFD. So um, We have these extra things up here because the contactor would have been installed right here but uh, K65B J265E-2. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go through this K65 isn't it? That's for an uh, something else I don't know if I can make this work or not, but I'm gonna keep looking into it. And like I said, I'm gonna test ground to make sure nothing's grounded too. We're just gonna to test tone. We've got a good tone and we have a good tone. I know people freak out because I test on the unit ground, but the unit is grounded. We've got a good tone. We're just looking for a direct short to ground. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm looking at my meter. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So there's no visible direct shorts to ground. At this point, what I'm gonna do is power the unit on, test three phase power coming in. It's not gonna pull the contactor in because there's no, nothing hooked up to the coil. And then I'm gonna try to see if I can test the blower function and see if this gets energized and de-energized. I don't know how they were doing this, so we'll have to see. Do the one, two, three, please don't blow up, right? Here we go. Dang it, man. getting a call for cooling but I don't want it to do that so I'm actually going to disconnect this so that way we don't get a call for cooling so I disconnected that it's like we're getting alarms 
you guys can't see this, but we're getting alarm 46, and it says that that is what? It won't tell me. And let's see what the next one is. Alarm 129, VFD shutdown. So it senses that we've got the VFD unhooked. Okay, and then alarm 46. I don't know what 46 is. Alarm 46, it's not giving me the whatever it is. But anyways, I'm gonna see if I can't get it running. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put the unit into test mode. I know you guys can't see this. Let's grab this. Okay, I silence the alarms. It's off on alarm, that's fine. Let's enter the menu. This thing's not letting me get past the alarm. So, I might have to hook that little relay back up. So, I don't know what's going on in this little inverter board down here. It's all burnt up, so I don't want to hook up power to that. So what I might do is just go ahead and uh, clip all these guys, wire nut them, then hook up the relay, and I think it'll work after that. All right, what I did was I went ahead and took all the wires off the bottom of the VD VFD, wire nutted them, and it looks like we're still getting the same alarm, and then plugged everything back in. It looks like maybe one of these completes a circuit so that it's since it's broken right now it probably tells it that the vfd is not working yeah i know you guys can't see it right now but it's not letting me silence these going through and seeing if it'll let me all right last thing we need to do i think i figured out the wiring was we're going to check phase rotation so the, the field piece sc480 does a good job of that line one to line two and then you leave line one on and you put the one on line two onto line three and it should say line one two three and it does so that means we've got the correct phasing sequence for the contactor right here. So theoretically our blower should be running in the right direction. Next thing I gotta do, um, I have the cooling disconnected. I wanna see if the fan turns on. Put that in. We'll listen up, see the contactor pull in. Contactor pulled in. We'll go check rotation real quick. So to check rotation, what I'll do is just pull this. And when it powers down, I'll take you guys over here and we can watch it. It just shut down so we can make sure that it's actually going in the right direction. And it is. All right, it's running counterclockwise, which is what it says. Belt is a little loose. It needs some PM work for sure. Okay, so um, with that being said, we're gonna power this guy up into stage one cooling. So we'll put this back on real quick. Indoor blower should fire up, okay? And then we'll fire up stage one cooling, make sure the blower's running, fire up stage two cooling, make sure the blower stays running. And then we'll have to uh, make sure that we let it run for a while and it doesn't error out on some sort of an error. So um, let's go ahead and put this guy in here. Yeah, I'll have to tighten that in. So we got a call for Y1 and we are running. I wanna make sure See, because this is a multi-stage air volume unit, okay? The reason why there's a VFD on it, basically it's a two-speed blower motor. Whenever second stage calls, the blower motor goes to 100%. Whenever first stage calls by itself, the blower motor runs at like, whatever, a, a slower speed than full speed, okay? Whatever they have it programmed at. And I wanna make sure that we're not gonna error out. So it's a good thing that with just a call for Y1, the blower's running, that's a plus, but we need to make sure it continues to run when we get a second stage and we also need to make sure that we don't air out on some sort of an issue. Now again, this is just temporary because we have to order the drive, so. It's been running for about 20 minutes on first stage. I went ahead and energized the second stage. I know you can't see it right now, but we're energized down here on the lights. Like this camera doesn't pick up the LEDs very well for you guys, but. So we got a call for fan, Y1, Y2, and an occupied signal, so. Um, this will get them going temporarily. We have a blower that'll disengage, and then we have, uh, this will just have to sit in here temporarily. That's just low voltage, and I'm gonna order the drive. Uh, the last thing that I'm gonna do, just because I wanna try to simulate any errors, is we're gonna disconnect Y1 and Y2, make sure that the blower continues to run and that we don't get an error message. Let's go ahead and disconnect Y2. Let's wait for it to stage down. It'll take a second, okay. We stage down on Y2, and then I wanna stage down on Y1, and then make sure that there's absolutely no error messages popping up. Let's give it a second, and the fan should continue to run. 
okay? And then what I want to do is go ahead and disconnect the G. Make sure that it stages down. Contactor should pull out here in a minute. Let's give it a second. It says fan only at the time right now. Just want to make sure that this thing's going to not error out on me, you know? All right, so we, our call for G went away. It now says idle on the Prodigy board. So I'm going to go ahead and push this back in, see if we get a call for fan again. Hang on. I'm trying to do this one hand. It's probably not the smartest thing. Yep, we got a call for fan, so that's good. And then we're gonna stage everything up again. But yeah, it looks like we're gonna be good temporarily. One thing I didn't say is that I, uh, or one thing I didn't do, I should say, is test the fan's current draw to make sure we're not over amping or anything. Uh, we're running at, right at nine amps. And let's go over here and see what the fan is allowed to run. Evaporators are allowed to run 10.6 amps, so we're safe. So we're within spec. Um, we're gonna talk to the customer about some PM service, cleaning these units up. There's water running everywhere too, so. I think that is the stupidest, stupidest place for a fire sprinkler. Even though I knew it was there, I still jammed it with my veto bag coming up. So lucky that thing hasn't popped a hole yet. I'm gonna take some pictures and contact their facilities department and let them know they need to be ready for that because that thing goes off. It's not really our fault. It's kind of stupid. All right, we're back today. We're going to uh, get this guy finished up. So it's been running fine since uh, last I was here, running with the fan the way that I have it bypassed. So uh, we're gonna put the new drive in and hopefully, uh, I think I'm gonna blow some drains out too because I think last time I was here, the drains were plugged up or something. Doesn't look like they're overflowing this time though. So the first step is we're gonna power down the unit. We need to verify that everything's correct. It looks like it's correct. I got the new one. I need to undo what I did and then redo what they did. And hopefully everything lines up. Looks like I'm gonna need some connectors. Uh, this restaurant, the AC unit, you know what, before I go any further, I'm wearing a face shield. I'm not afraid of COVID on the roof. Uh, this thing, I wear this thing, this gator around my neck all day when I'm working and I'll usually just pull it up over my face. And uh, it's actually pretty convenient because I don't like the sun on my skin. Although in hindsight, my ears are unprotected, which I gotta put sunscreen on my, I always forget to put sunscreen on my ears, but um, I just got this gator from like Instagram. Uh, I don't even know who makes it. I'll have to look and see, but it's all right. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it does the job. But anyways, so that's why I may sound a little bit muffled. So we're gonna power it down. Uh, replace it line for line. When you're doing these VFDs, you gotta be uber careful that you do not mix up incoming and outgoing voltage because the drive will instantly blow up. This unit's uh, fire alarm is tied into this AC. So um, I had to let the manager know to call the fire alarm company before I powered it down. Because when you power it down, there's a little resistor right in here and it's jumping between the alarm contacts and it's a proving circuit. And if that resistor gets interrupted, which it does when you power down the unit, it sends a trouble signal to the alarm company. So you gotta make sure you know how your systems operate. Even though my bag is heavy, I do appreciate it has everything that I need in it. I try not to keep too much. This is just my wrench bag, but it has my electrical screwdrivers, some screwdrivers I can bash on. They're uh, impact rated, you know, so you can beat the crap out of them. And then all my other stuff. So I try not to, uh, you know, carry too much, but it has everything I need for the most part. All right, now is the scary part. I always, my butt clenches when I do this because I don't know what caused this to blow up in the first place. We know there's nothing wrong with the motor because the motor's been running for a couple weeks by itself with just a contactor. Um, the odds are there's nothing wrong and they just had a bad drive. You can also tell that it's been getting very dirty because this is the air coming out of the fan and it's, I probably should have brushed that off first, but it's pretty dusty right there. So that means that it's been sucking in a lot of dirt. I really don't like these drives installed in the package units, but you know, the customer would have to, in my opinion, they shouldn't come in package units. They should be installed in an electrical room downstairs that's conditioned. I would think they would last a lot longer that way. Um, everything looks good, don't see anything scary. So we're gonna power this guy up. 
stand back. We always get to the side and watch your ears because when they blow, they're loud. See what happens. Knock on wood. Nothing blew up yet. Stand back, man. Drive is speeding up. Now, interesting, it's only running at 30 hertz. It's probably hard to see. That's the frame rate of the camera doing that. But all stages are running. That drive should be speeding up to full speed. So I am gonna have to call Linux technical support and see what the deal is with that. All right, so that's frustrating. After going through some stuff with tech support, uh, we diagnosed that this board right here has got a problem. So, you know, tech support, People give me crap sometimes about calling tech support, but when you're working on OEM weird stuff like this, this is proprietary controller. You gotta talk to tech support. So anyways, um, told them what happened, we changed the drive. The problem is, is that the drive isn't speeding up, okay? Right now it's at 30 hertz. And the interesting thing is, if you disconnect your call for cooling, the drive will speed up to full speed. I know that's bouncing around, but 58 hertz. So the problem that I'm told is, is that this board right here is jacked up and uh, it could have been something when the drive blew up, who knows? We also might have a bad main board. So we gotta kinda take a gamble here. Do we wanna just order this board or do we wanna order the main board too? Um, that's gonna be the interesting one. So uh, I tried to call, this is national accounts. So. They have a different phone number that we have to talk to. So I tried to call National Accounts Parts and of course they're not there, so I'll have to deal with them tomorrow. Um, so this one is not finished. Uh, and also another thing, so you guys see that I uh, stripped the wires right here. I actually hate it when people do that, but sometimes you've got to. I was on phone with tech support and we satisfied on cooling. I needed this thing jumped out quick. So I just stripped them back. I'll probably put some tape on those because there's nothing worse than those things short now. Um, so this sucks, I'm gonna have to put that contactor back in. All right, well, it's wired, it's running in the right direction, it looks wrong, but it's correct. And uh, we're back over here. I'm gonna fix that contactor cover. Um, but I left this installed for now because you gotta leave the control wires installed for it to still work right. And we are back again for the third time. Uh, I've got a new M2 and then the whatever 133 board or something like that for the VFD underneath there. So when I talked to tech support, we basically went through a couple diagnostic steps and then we pulled off this cover and there's this board right here and the board did not have the proper voltage coming out that was telling the VFD to speed up and slow down. So we were just running on low speed the entire time. Um, he did give us the option. He said, you know, it's a possibility. It's just this little add-on board or it could be the main M2 also and I brought it up to the customer and the customer just wanted to do them both So hopefully we can get this done and be done with it permanently And again, like I've said before this actually flashes a display for me, but not for you guys You can kind of see it. It says fan only but powered the unit down um, You got to use a flathead screwdriver and you just kind of pry on these guys. This board cover will come off we're not changing the display, so we just unplug it, and then we're gonna unplug the uh, wires going into the board one by one, and then we'll just change the entire board, making sure that we connect everything back. This is the add-on board that was problematic, and it is a 133, A133, but we're changing this and the M2. And then after that, we have to go through the new M2 installation where we program the model and serial number of the unit Make sure everything's configured and then we'll start it up and hopefully everything will be good. It's a little overwhelming to see all the connectors everywhere. Now, for the most part, I mean, worst case scenario, you can trace back via the wire code to figure out what goes where, but for the most part, they all, Linux has done a pretty good job of making sure that they're set up with these little clips to make sure you can't put them in the wrong spot. But it is still possible. There's a couple like individual ones like this that you can put in the wrong spot. So just gotta go through carefully. All right, again, I just, uh, first off, I took a picture too. That's another thing you can do just so you don't have to guess as much. But every wire is numbered. You just have to figure out the combinations of how it plugs. And there is empty spaces too, because we don't have reheat. We don't have a reversing valve. 
but I got everything plugged back in. Um, I'm gonna plug in all the sensors. We're not gonna put the thermostat input in, but we are gonna put R and C. Well, actually, I don't even need to, to be honest with you, because that's just going downstairs. And then we'll uh, put the display on, turn it on, program it, and then we'll give it a call for cooling and all that stuff. I gotta wire in the BFD also. All right, I'm all back together. VFDs hooked in, ground wire hooked up. Made sure I hooked up the line voltage to the line side, the load to the load, because boom, if you do, the opposite. Uh, everything's good. I did not hook up R and or the thermostat because I don't want it to call right now. I want to handle everything. I want to program the board first. So we're going to power this guy up now. All right, we're going to power it up. Of course, we're going to stand out of the way. Hopefully nothing goes boom. EFD says zero. Okay, it's looking good. The unit just says restart mode right now. I'm going to give it a second. Showing the software version on the board. And it's showing an alarm. Okay, showing an alarm, air volume control setup area. So we got to go through and program it now. Man, I was having some problems because I turned it on and it still wouldn't speed up to the right speed. And I called tech support and the tech support guy said, oh yeah, you should have changed this too. And it's like, dude, come on. I just got off the phone with them. They told me to change the M2 and the A133. They didn't tell me to change this too. Silly, but anyways, that wasn't the problem. I'm hoping I can get away without changing that because that seems kind of silly, but I don't know. Um, I ended up having to re go into here. Uh, I had inputted the model and serial number, but I didn't fully input all the configuration. So stupid me. I went and set the time, um, uh, set the program, the fan speeds, the outdoor air sensors and all that stuff. Because essentially I installed a new air conditioner according to the circuit board because the circuit board's the brain. So I had to reprogram the whole thing. Now we've got first stage cooling, just one LED light. We're at 42 Hertz. I know that's hard to see. And then when second stage kicks on, it'll speed up to 59 Hertz. I've already seen it. So before we weren't getting that speed up. Um, and that's why after talking to tech support, they had me change those two boards. So we're just waiting for that to happen. I have someone downstairs flipping the thermostat on. I actually still am having tech support call me back, but we'll see if they call me before I leave. Um, I was kind of irritated when he told me I should have changed the display. I'm like, dude, I, it's not the guy's fault on the phone, but the previous guy, you know, if they wanted me to change the display too, they should have told me. All right, goes my second stage. Second stage and it just sped up to 59 Hertz. So we're good now. I'm gonna watch this operate for a few minutes. We're finally done with this thing. And I pulled out all the old contactor and everything. So we're going to call this one done, finally. Okay, they can't always be perfect, right? You know, I mean, it's in the real world stuff happens. You don't necessarily get everything fixed on the first call. It's not always, you know, cookie cutter, boom, boom, boom. On this one, we ran into some problems, okay? Um, from the beginning, though, I did what I had to do to try to get the customer operational because I wanted their air conditioner to work in the meantime. I knew that this was going to take a while to get all these parts, even when it was just the VFD in the beginning, I knew I was going to run into some issues. Okay. To clarify, I kind of covered it a little bit in the beginning of the video. The whole point of having a VFD in this unit, it literally just makes the indoor blower two speeds. That's all it does. Okay. And then it provides overload protection for the motor. Um, in California, we have an energy code called title 24. Now I know you guys are adopting this in some other parts of the country now too, but in essence, if this thing is running with full speed, okay, in theory, that has to be enough air volume for the unit to operate with two stages. If you take the, the, the most common, you know, rule of thumb, 400 CFMs per ton. Okay. Well, um, if you take that calculation, right, and you do 15 tons, what is that? 4,000 CFMs, 400 times 15, uh, 6,000 CFMs, okay? So that's with all stages running. So if we're doing 15 tons of cooling and we have 6,000 CFMs of air moving across the evaporator coil, great. Theoretically, we have the right amount of airflow, right? But what happens if we turn off two or three of the compressors and there's just one or two left, depending on how many stages the unit has, right? Well, when you stage down to just first stage, it's just one compressor running. We don't necessarily need that much air anymore. And theoretically, we are pulling too much air, right? You understand why we have to have that two stage? It's like an energy thing, right? Because you're saving energy. In essence, you're running that blower 
and you're moving too much air across the evaporator. We don't need that much air, right? We're not cooling the air down properly, but you're just wasting energy. So that's the whole theory as to why they do multi-stage air volume, MSAV. MSAV is what Linux calls this unit, okay? So first stage, it runs with a lower air volume. Second stage, it speeds up. Right. And on these Linux units, even though it has three or four compressors, they only operate typically as two stages. So depending on how many it has. So this one has three compressors. So it does one compressor for first stage, the next two compressors for second stage. And then sometimes if they have like a, the 18 ton units that have four compressors, they might do one, you know, and different things. Now, um, that's not saying that everyone's like that. Sometimes you have multi-stage thermostats that can do more than two stages. OK, so. That's the whole point of having the VFD. Now, on this one, obviously the VFD didn't solve the problem. Now, there's another thing that I didn't tell you. The first time that I called technical support, and this probably makes everything make more sense. The first time I called technical support, he had me go through some parameters before we diagnosed the faulty A133 board. And when we were doing that, we noticed that the unit no longer had a model and serial number stored inside of it. And a lot of the other parameters that belong in the circuit board were missing. Okay. So something happened within the board that caused it to lose its memory and also blew up the drive. So something funky was going on. They probably had some sort of a power issue, but on the flip side, if they had a power issue, why didn't they have the same problem with the other units too? It's hard to say. Okay. Regardless, by the time the third time came around, I put in the new board. I reprogrammed everything 100%. The unit has now been working for about a week and a half, two weeks. So all is well. The customer is happy. I did the best that I could. Okay, I'm not perfect. I don't always get it on the first call. You know, it is what it is. I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. You guys notice that that behind me, that merch pile is getting lowered, right, guys? I released the merch. I thank you guys so very much. I think uh, within a week, I've put in 90-something orders. I'm so humbled by that, guys. I never even... I thought it was the silliest thing with me ordering these shirts. It just seemed odd to me when someone originally asked me, hey, are you going to do merch? I was like, no, I'm not interested in that. It just seems silly to me, but... I decided to do it and you guys are awesome. So thank you guys so very much. If any of you are interested, just go to my website, hvacrvideos.com. All the information's on there, okay? Uh, do me a favor, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really, really does help me out. Um, you can support the channel via my website, buying some merch. You can also support the channel by going to truetechtools.com. OK, and if you want to buy some tools or you're considering buying some tools, if you use my offer code, big picture, one word, you will save 8% on your order and I get a small commission and it's another way to help support the channel. OK, thank you guys so very much. Hopefully we'll see you Monday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific. So long as I can get off work in time, I'll go live on YouTube and we'll talk about all these videos and talk about the merch and whatever else you guys want to talk about. OK, we'll catch you guys next time.